Hey guys, today we're doing another nib review from our delicious nib candy box. And today we are going to take a look at the Leonard. Oh, it's so tiny, I can't read it. I really can't read it. Anyway, I will get an adult to help me read the writing on the nib. I'm sure many of you guys probably recognize what it is. All right, hello adult. Can you read this nib for me, please? My eyes are not as good as yours. It says Leonardent. H-I-E-F, England. H-I-E-F, England. Okay, thank you. I could read the Leonard. I just couldn't read the H-I-E-F. Now that you say it, I can... I can see it, but I don't know how I ever would have read that on my own. Okay, so we are inking on Denik paper. This is from the Inktober book. And as always, I disclaim that I actually just like this paper a lot, but I try to use what I have. Now, this nib will not fit in my Tachikawa holder. It is just too small. So let's see what other holders I have. And I feel like this is important because if you've invested in just one holder, you do need to know whether or not your nibs will fit in it. Let's try the Koenor holder. All right, we have found a holder that will work. Fantastic. And we're going to be inking with Daler Rowney FW ink in Payne's Gray. Now I've already got it in a small dippity dippity dip cup not a uh, dinky dip, which I do highly recommend. I love those, but just like a little, a little cup -roony. Does it even seal all the way? You can tell because there's like a load of condensation on the cap. And I got some scratch paper. All right, good flex. Seems like it will be easy enough to control. I do think this will be a good one. Let's move that camera so you guys can get a better view and not of the top of my hand. Maybe a little spidery on this paper. That is not uncommon with this Denik. If spidering and tearing bothers you, I do recommend you use Strathmore 500 series plate Bristol. But I am trying to use what I have. Gave myself a nice little ink print. Very cute, but that has to come off before I keep inking because it will smear. Sometimes I end up wearing as much ink as goes on the page. Bang, I'm gonna... Go ahead and write that down because I will forget it. Now this nib keeps scratching the paper and catching and cutting. So I may have to do another ink test with this nib on a nicer paper. I am trying to be very light handed, but it's still, as you can see, scratching the paper. Maybe you can't, let me see. There we go, scratching the paper, picking it up, causing it to tear, you know, all that wonderful good stuff. So I'm gonna try having an even lighter hand. And this may mean I have to spend the time to do a second review on a different paper.
What do you guys, those of you who use dip pens, what do you like to ink on? I see on blogs like the Postman's Knock that they'll use a dip pen and ink on all sorts of things, almost anything. A craft paper, and I would think that would be super duper prone to tearing once you add water, but they seem to make it work. And it's probably all about the combination of nib, pressure, and water. And for these little reviews, I actually have not been using any water, just the water that is in the ink itself. Since these reviews are so short, I don't normally need to wash off the nib. Keep picking out paper though, and that's really frustrating. So I got this notebook in the Art Snacks Inktober 2016 box. And one of the reasons I'm still using it for these reviews is they're still sending it out to people. They basically didn't change the 2017 box. So I feel like it's still relevant. And I believe they sell the sketchbook in their shop. And this was actually the sketchbook. They only sent one sketchbook and it was the one they recommended and I hate, I hate it. So I'm a little mean and I am not one who won't belabor a point when I feel it's relevant. So rather than use my nicer and probably less expensive Strathmore 500 series plate Bristol uh, visual journal. I'm trying to use up this Denik since I paid for it. Now normally what I would recommend to you guys is if you pay for an art supply and it behaves just really poorly and you hate it, don't force yourself to use it. It's only going to make a bunch of art you hate. I know it's a waste of money and that's a shame. And sometimes using materials you hate and making them work for you is a phenomenal way. Oh, already smeared. Can be a phenomenal way to learn new skills. But if it makes you miserable, don't fight yourself on it. If it ruins art for you, if it makes what you do unenjoyable, don't force yourself to use it just, just because you spent some money on it. why I think it's really important to do your research. There are definitely people out there who want to help you spend your money wisely on things you're going to enjoy. And so many people are very impulsive with their purchases and that, you know, I don't get to talk. I am too, but I do keep records of what I buy and what I like and what I dislike and I share them with other people. So if you're going to get burnt, at least write a review. Help other people not make your mistake. Help somebody else save some money. It's not quite as good as not having spent the money yourself, but you know, at least it makes that mistake sort of worthwhile. Anyway, I'm still inking this, but I feel like on this paper, I can't really draw a conclusion because the nib is catching a lot on the paper and I'm not sure if it's a flaw in the nib. I'm not always super fond of manuscript nibs and Leonard is like a subsection of manuscript or rather manuscript distributes them. Not super sure where the distinction lies. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to do another drawing and another review because I can't tell whether it is the paper that's the problem or the nib that's the problem. So I am going to wash this nib off because it's going to take a few minutes and I'll be back with a sketch in my little Strathmore plate Bristol notebook and we'll see if there's a difference. All right, so here we are 
with test number two for the Leonard H-I-E-F. And this is straight up Strathmore 500 series plate Bristol. And I sketched this really quick. Oh yeah, this is much already less. Ooh, oh, but it drags. I was going to say it's much less likely to catch, but it has a drag to it. I wonder if it's just not meant to have any line variation or flex to it. It doesn't have fins, but I think it might be a drawing nib. I'd have to double check. However, it's still catching less on the plate Bristol, but it's a, it's a draggy pen. It's going to catch on your paper, especially if you're using something that isn't as nice or if you are working kind of wet in the wet. Or if you're trying to work quick, it's going to, it's going to be a, a problem, I think. which might make it okay for certain types of inking, but it would make it not suitable for comic artists who kind of need to be able to work quick. might be trying to work too quick with this thing. So I'm gonna try to remind myself to take it slow. Often you can get better results from a nib if you go a little slower. It's my problem I'm always trying to rush through everything, get more done. It doesn't actually make a bit of difference. It doesn't improve my life any. It just means I did more during the day and I'm exhausted and more prone to burning out. But I'm also kind of a busy person, so I don't know what I would do if I wasn't keeping busy with art. Maybe I'd have an interesting hobby. Ah, oh, come on. Due to how draggy the nib is, the paper started to pull away from me. Yeah, I could see this being kind of a frustrating nib. I would not, I mean, it'll ink. It'll put ink down on the paper. And there's nibs that won't even do that. But I would not call it a good ink inker. Some nibs kind of need to be broken in. I don't know if this one is really worth that kind of time, but if it's all you got, then you work with what you got, right? Or you make it work for you, ideally. does not want to accommodate me. Ooh, a 
it's draggy and it wants to splatter. It's always great. Not splatter enough that you could make it part of your style and make it look cool. Just enough that it's annoying and unpredictable. It's okay. We are almost finished with the Leonard H-I-E-F. So uh, there are a lot of good nibs out there that are good for inking. There are a lot of nibs that are fun for inking. This is not one of them, and this is not a nib I would recommend. Um, I think it is the sort of nib that comes in packs, although I believe I ordered it open stock or purchased it open stock from Paper and Ink Arts. It will not fit in a Tachikawa or Kuratake holder. So if you have one of these with the metal ferrule inside that grip it, it will work with that. So I would say skip this nib for inking. But if you're feeling contrary and you want to prove me wrong, please do and make sure you link the results. I'd love to see what you come up with. So I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for checking out this review and I hope you will check out my other nib reviews on this channel. Bye.